Hey guys, it's a, a Sunday live stream, so I guess this is going to be a little different. Let me go ahead and mute my, my computer. There we go. So Sunday, this is definitely an off-topic thing. Um, yeah, just kind of bored. Figured I'd get to work on a... Um, let's see, there we go. I'm trying to figure out how to use this. Uh, my producer is in here, so um, yeah. So if you're joining in or you're already in, uh, let me actually go click on this. Uh, so Jeff is saying cut the red wire. Yeah, I don't know. Um, good thing I'm uh, slightly colorblind, but shh, don't tell the Air Force. Uh, so I have an embroidery somewhat related project going on. Um, basically, I had purchased a computer monitor off of eBay, and uh, it's a touchscreen. So my goal is to use a touchscreen mount or a monitor and mount it to the wall so I can put it in between my two embroidery machines, send designs to it, and I can pull a color change sequence up on it. But uh, turns out that the monitor I got is, um, well, missing the USB port. Go ahead and shut that so the puppies and dog don't come, or uh, Dog and cat don't come down. Yeah, so this uh, the board I got, I took it out. I'm sure I could have already reached out to the eBay seller, never responded, so I'm probably hosed there. Um, but if we go over here, you can see that there should have been a connector here. Um, however, there is not. So this is where a USB plug would be um, that you'd plug into the computer for it to actually. Uh, accept your touchscreen inputs. So I'm going to actually salvage one off of this Arduino Nano or Uno board. Um, I'm going to put this on that one and I'll just order another uh, USB port in the future to put back on this guy. So it was either that or rob one from a printer. Um, but yeah. Um, let's go to the comments real quick. So I got a Facebook user that says, hi, I don't know who that is. Uh, so, hello, uh, Letty saying, you need to learn how to do nano LEDs for some designs. Um, I never really thought of incorporating electronics into embroidery. Maybe that's uh, something way down the line. Uh, and Letty again, uh, you have to pay extra for those connections that work. I know. Um, I paid $100 uh, for the monitor and $45 for shipping. Um, and, yeah, I guess I, I should have realized that USB port that should have been included is not included, uh, unless if that's part of, like, sales tax or something. They just rip it out. Uh, Jerry Lee saying, Ola, and Jeff saying, you could splice a cable directly. Yeah, I thought of that, uh, but then I have this ugly... Uh, cord dangling out and I'd rather if I already have it open I might as well just do it right um, the other idea I had was to take one off of this uh, external hard drive um, thing but it's not the right USB port so I would have been monkeying around with it anyway so I figured uh, might as well just do it right so yeah obviously this isn't exactly embroidery um, but it is for an embroidery project uh but yeah so we're gonna go ahead i'm gonna start with uh cleaning the board off i got my soldering iron up as high as it can go which is 480 degrees uh i need to get a better one i guess that goes a lot hotter um but yeah let's switch over so unfortunately i don't think i can really zoom in on this yeah i can't so that's about as good as i'm gonna get so i'm gonna go ahead Put some more flux on this bad boy just to kind of get the solder to adhere to it a little bit better. And we're just going to go ahead and get rid of some of it. Just try to clean it off a little bit. Okay, so now I gotta get rid of these two. Um, I'm gonna get the pins off on the back side too. So 
So if I was planning this in the future, I probably would have set up my GoPro and everything, but then halfway through the GoPro would die anyway. So yeah, there's always that. Thing smoke in. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, this is getting a little hot right now. I have one of them solder sucker things somewhere, but I don't have a clue where it is. I've been trying to think of it. Come on, heat up. No, oh, I, I guess you have my hair. <laughs> I apologize if I am blocking the way of the camera. My hands are my priority. So what did everyone else work on uh, today or this weekend? I can tell you that I did not do any embroidery. This was a very lazy weekend. This is really crappy. All I want to do is get this stupid little hole cleaned out so I can put the new one in. I have a butane powered soldering iron, but that shouldn't be a problem. Hmm. Well, whatever. I'm not doing very good keeping my uh, head out of the picture, I don't think. Thank you. 
Okay, well, that's one hole that I got freed. Next one is pretty close. So this is what I have in my left hand is called a uh, solder wick. Basically I'm heating it up and I have a little bit of flux on it and the solder likes to jump to the uh, solder wick then. Just kind of cleans it up. Um, this is what I've been using for a long time, but this stuff is not working very well right now. Okay, so looking at the comments, I see um, Jeff has not turned on or looked at his computer. Yeah, I know it's been pretty quiet over in Nerdland or Nerdville. Um, yeah, you're going to have a lot to catch up. <laughs> Letty with an arm in a sling. Uh, that doesn't sound like fun. Um, do you break it? or? I mean, obviously, you want to just put your arm in a sling for fun. And then um, Jeff just asked the same thing. I always dragged my, so. <laughs> Let's see. So we'll go to this side, check it out. Need a tweezers. That's one. Uh, so close. Normally, this isn't that difficult. Probably just because I'm on live. This is why we need another nerd in here so we can actually uh, have some conversation because I'm not very good at doing this and talking at the same time, as you can all tell. Okay, let's see. Broke straight across the humerus and shattered the ball. Ooh, that doesn't sound like fun. Dr. Jeff agrees with that. Obviously, he should have gave you that advice before you did it. Look at the top.
And I still got to hope that this even works. And there's one little bugger left. Hopefully you can get it out. Okay, that is all of the data and power pins. And then I still got these two big uh, ground ones left, which are still being a pain. You can barely even get them to move. I need something to clear this up a little bit. Yes, I'm using stabilizer. Told you it was embroidery related. See, Jeff is watching me in the background. Um, He's talking to you, but I don't think Matt can hear me. I haven't actually used this soldering iron a whole lot, uh, to be honest. This is part of a soldering iron and a uh, hot air kit. Okay, that one's up. Yeah, let's get you some fresh. Let's see. Let's go up a little bit. Um, again, Facebook user, you are remaining anonymous. Uh, you like watching stuff like this? Yeah, I do too. Uh, a lot of times I put in something like this in the background. Uh, Letty. Uh, but me taking out the solder was repairing stained glass. You don't have the room on the circuit board. Yeah. Um, I don't know if doing stained glass would be more like a copper pipe um, using like a bigger torch or something. If you use an actual soldering iron like this, I haven't done anything like that. I always thought of it. There's like a $300 kit online you could buy, but. Uh, Fred saying get a solder sucker. It'll save you time and energy. I do have one. 
Um, but the problem is I have the basement to myself, so I don't know where it is. <laughs> um, how can I hear you, Jeff? Uh, well, I don't think you can, unless if you're by his house, which would be a little weird. Um, considering you live like a thousand miles away. Uh, I don't think you can. I'm going to turn the speakers off. Mystery Theater 3000. Uh, unfortunately, I don't get that. <laughs> Matt's got Matt's got to turn on his speakers first. We're totally Mystery Science Theater in this right now. Yep. I am definitely not a professional. And I am focused. <laughs> so... That is why this is my own board. Um, and not someone else's. Um, I'm just going to clean it off a little bit. Biggest thing is not pulling the pads off. So, um, yep. So we're going to set him aside, grab my Arduino donor, and we're going to murder this guy too. Turn on my speakers. Oh. Um. <laughs> are you there? Maybe, are you? I am, but now I hear echo. Stop echoing. Okay. Well... <laughs> He's got that super fancy mic. I'm just going to switch over to my phone then. I was totally Mystery Science Theater 3000 in this. Are right, you still hear me? Yeah, obviously. There's a ton of echo though. Um, what if I do this? Do you hear me now? I can. So wait. Okay, we'll just use my laptop mic then instead of this fancy mic. Why didn't anyone tell me that you were in? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Man, come on. You just weren't listening. Uh, now you distracted me. Now I left this stuck to the stupid solder. <laughs> <laughs> you need a hotter soldering iron. Yeah, this one, uh, I thought it went up a lot higher than this, but apparently don't. But yes, my solder sucker would be a lot nicer if I could ever remember where it is. Twenty-three degrees north. Um, that's actually probably pretty damn close, to be honest. That's where my workbench is. <laughs> See, it's like I have eyes in the room. Ugh. Need a real pro, like Louis Rossman. Yeah, I don't know who that is. Uh, he's only like a really famous YouTuber that does circuit board repairs on every single Apple device, and <laughs> the pretty much the lead now for uh, right to repair. So basically, you watch his YouTube channel. 
Yeah, but I've never actually learned to solder from him, so that doesn't really help the fact. I mean, most of his stuff is hot air reflow anyways, but what's the difference? Well, there you go. Put the hot air on there. I just don't know if that would really work very well for this. I mean, I didn't really try it, but... It might make it pop off, but... Let's see. That one's pretty much open. So... Putting it out there, what did everyone have for dinner today? I had a nice burger from Hy-Vee. What'd Jiffy have? We grilled burgers. Well, isn't that a quinky dink? But not from Hy-Vee, though. Hy-Vee's kind of expensive here. I think Hy-Vee is just kind of expensive in general. I guess we can try the hot air flow. It should be pretty much ready to pop out. Otherwise, I could kind of stick a. Uh, then it kind of get a little tension on it to pull it apart. Let's clear these guys out. So, Crystal R. had steak, baked potatoes, and peas, and Suzanne had steak, baked potato, and salad. I kind of want a st steak now. Seems like everyone went out grilling this week. It's like it was what? How, how hot did they get there? It was 86 here. Yeah, it's probably something like that. The house is 82 degrees right now. So the funny thing is, I know I have a, a bunch of these connectors somewhere in the house, probably in the same spot my solder sucker is, but. So apparently ribeyes in the air fryer are amazing. Uh, I did try that once. I do not have an air fryer. And Letty had baked Italian subs. Oh, wait, air fryer. No, never mind. I was thinking of the uh, Instapot. They're not the same thing. Amazon air fryer. Yeah, I can't hear you now. <laughs> Well, that's because you turned on the annoying sounds. How hot does that thing get? The same, but not hot enough is the answer. <laughs> So Suzanne tells us it was cold and windy here in Rhode Island, high of 59 degrees. It was too hot here, but it's not quite humid yet, so at least there's that.
Yeah, I've had the air conditioner on here in Nebraska already, but you know, we've had it off the past couple times. It got a little warmer. Well, that's because you work in the cave. And when you're underground, it's generally cooler. Or do you, have, is your room very insulated? Uh, no, it's not. Yeah, if this guy don't work very well after this, I could care less. It seems like every time I start a soldering project, I have to go buy more solder, flux, and... Yep, all the supplies. I'm lucky if I can find my soldering iron. took the pad off this one but again I don't care about this guy <laughs> Ooh, it got a little hot. as long as it works on your new board that's all that matters right yep again professional service at a discounted right Well, I can't remember who said it earlier. I think it might have been Letty. You have to pay extra for things to work when you get it. I guess, yeah. How big is the screen? Uh, it's like 21 inch or something. So it's a pretty good size touch screen. Yeah. For 100 bucks. <laughs> JA Digitizing Studio says, feel like I'm watching an episode of MacGyver. Yeah, except they know what they're doing. That and uh, you don't have a paper clip out yet. I don't even know where a paper clip is in the house. <laughs> Never ever find one. Uh, let's see. If I need a third hand is really what this is. Yeah, I only have one. Maybe two if I'm lucky. Do you know if this uh, monitor works natively with Linux, I guess it's Debian, right? Um, it has drivers available, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. And you're going to catch capture thread breaks, right? Yeah, probably make some software or something to log them. Yep, the goal was just to make a uh, web application that runs on a Raspberry Pi, which will be what this is connected to. Uh, since I send all my designs to my happy through Raspberry Pi, um, and basically whenever I have a thread break, I'll just hit a button on the touchscreen, which will log it in the web app, basically saying, hey, I've had three thread breaks on this needle. Um, and it'll kind of help me figure out exactly the proper tensions and everything for this particular thread that I'm using, that I'm stuck with using. Well, it is very compliant. Yeah, since no one knows anything about how to properly run it. I need a hacksaw. I mean, that would work too, but I need a fire or something. Oh, where is a fire? No, I saw one. Here we go.
Yeah, you really need a third hand. I do. I used to have one back when I was in high school for uh, soldering stuff, but it broke and I no longer have it, obviously. It's time to replace it. Yeah, I know. It's like a $20 thing off Amazon. Or I could just get a vice grip. <laughs> Stack of books. So are you setting this up on a Pi 3 or a Pi 4? Uh, yes. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Whichever one I have available, I guess. The one that sits over there? You haven't looked at it yet? Well, I have a, a nice case for a Pi 4, but uh, I think it's a... I don't have any Pi 4s. Yet. Other than the, the Zeros. I mean, obviously that can be changed if I open the Amazon app. But, but which one would you get? The 2 gig, 4 gig, or 8 gig of RAM? Um, I don't really know. Be, I mean, go big or go home. <laughs> yeah, but it's also more expensive. I'd probably just do like the middle ground. Four gig. Yeah. I think I have two Raspberry Pi fours. Yeah, two. One of them doesn't isn't hooked up to anything. I think I'm gonna put Octopi on it and run um, my other 3D printer. But I've debated. Um, because it has a network jack. It doesn't have Wi-Fi, but it's got a network jack. Um, so I've debated just sharing the networking port instead of putting Octopi on it. But Crystal R says, yeah, go big or go home is right. Because an 8 gig board right now is like 75 bucks. And I would definitely put um, active cooling on it. <laughs> Just because. Yeah, the, the case has the fan and everything, the big ass heat sink on it. I actually debated just sending it to you in one of the many shipments, but. I just found it while I was looking for a donor board. Okay. So I think it's just got to get this ground off the edge. Yeah, I and I've done this, but my soldering iron is significantly hotter than yours. Yeah, this one is not that great, um, apparently. I have my wood burning one, which is also a soldering iron. I don't know what that one gets up to. But yeah, this one only goes 480, which you're supposed to be at like five something or six, I believe. So that's also probably why this isn't working out very well. Because I'm having a lot of heat on it. For a long time instead of a lot of heat for a little bit so this is the one you use for patches right uh no uh the one i use for patches is my uh, wood burning one oh But this one's got the hot air on it, right? Yes. Oh, I thought you got the hot air one for patches. Nope. This is why I'm fired. Oh, you've been fired many times before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a pro. Is 
So that one looks free. I don't know if that Audrino is going to survive. Oh, this is probably toast. Whatever you do, don't break the plug off. All right, worst case scenario, I'm just soldering a wire directly to it. <laughs> I think we need to start a GoFundMe for you for a new soldering iron. No, I don't need a GoFundMe. I just go buy one. And a third hand. <laughs> the problem is, is when you need it, you're not going to buy it. But then when you're done and you're looking at buying them, you're going to be like, well, I'm done. Maybe next time. Yeah, that's usually how it goes. It's like you know me. <laughs> Definitely looser. Yeah, this should have been up here a long time ago. Yeah, a little bit. Forty-five minutes in. <laughs> Sheesh, this thing is. See, that's the problem. Is now you've got a timer on it, and you're going to see how long it took. Yeah, this should be heating this sucker up like crazy. There's no way the board's surviving this. <laughs> I have to change the name of the title of board repair to board murder. <laughs> board bake off. Yeah. Board fry. I mean, there's no pad left on this guy. Pretty damn close.
I can't believe you don't have it off yet. I am uh, going to be spending some time on Amazon tonight looking at Saturn Irons, that is for sure. If I pull the pads off this guy, I don't really care. But oh, I think you cooked the pads off a long time ago. I know, right? I remember in uh, like seventh or eighth grade when I started playing around with the electronics and soldering before I found out about flux. And when I found out about flux, it was like, holy crap. <laughs> I like your little flux pan. Yeah, I have a ton of them because I keep losing them. I have a uh, like your regular typical flux too. That's like the little tube or uh, top of it, but this works pretty nice too. I have a little brush in a little tub when I can find it. Hmm. We are close. Let me just do this instead. Which pin is causing the problem? I'm not sure. It might be one of these brown guys. with all the pads. This is like incredibly frustrating. Finally, I've never had that bad of an experience doing this. <laughs> and you still have to put it on. I know. So uh, remind me <laughs> later to uh, to purchase a new soldering iron. Allie's going to be like, why do you need one of them? And you're like, Jeff said so. <laughs> You'll be like, watch my latest Facebook Live. All 50... Three minutes of it. Yeah, it's like 50 minutes too long. <laughs> I'd like to get these ones open a little bit. Man, I really need that solder sucker back. Yeah, I 
don't think my butane one really gets as hot either. It's a Dremel one, I think. Has anyone got any big plans for the week besides work? Don't forget extra work. My wife's heading down to Kansas City for a business meeting. She trusts you at the house alone? No, but it's mandatory. gonna come back you're gonna have a whole world of lasers in your garage probably lots of pizza boxes <laughs> oh yeah we're gonna go with it luckily this guy ain't that hot anymore you're talking about your soldering iron i was talking about the uh this tip or a uh, connector. At least it's the right one. Um, um I didn't sound confident. No, I would it is. I'm gonna put a little bit of solder on these and see if I can maybe pull it off because it's not obviously gonna go in with that much solder blocking the hole. And Crystal R says, playing with my new Wilcom E4. Just got it installed a few hours ago. Super exciting stuff. Nice. Well, I hope you like it. It's a lot of... took me a little while to get used to it, but once I got it, I got it a lot better than this job. Well, it helps you have that super wide monitor and you can have every button labeled. Yeah. It does. <laughs> This is really, 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 really frustrating. Oh, I thought you were done with the wicking. Um, still trying to get some of the solder out. If I can't, I'll just have fun. Letty says, need to find my fuller borders for a couple of patches. Nice. I'm going to be making quite a bit of them this week, I can already tell. Just five or six emails have come through. That's all. Better than none. Hopefully con the kids to run the machine for me. Hopefully. And Crystal, I don't like labels. Too busy. Might help while I learn it, though. Yeah. I don't have the labels um because my screen's not super wide and i think it'd be easier to learn what all the buttons do but i printed out the shortcut key list and so that's more what i use rather than push the buttons um i have had to learn where some buttons are and <laughs> i've spent a good while looking for a few of them well there's that live i did where it's like where is this button like i know i paid for it yep it's exactly double. found it like way after but what elements did you get with it, Crystal? I think that's the number one thing people ask me when they're getting ready to buy a Wilcom is what element should I get?
So good idea, love shortcuts, and motifs right now. That's a good element to have. They're all good. Typically when I, I started with shading and open fills, and then I would go until I was digitizing something, and it ended up I wasn't able to do something because I needed the... Uh, Uh, I needed the L element, and then I went and got it. Um, Fred says, pressing the soldering iron into the board equals bad form. <laughs> Jeff, I don't know about your electronic skill levels, but I'm really worried about what you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's matted soldering. I won't, I won't post videos of my soldering. <laughs> and Crystal, I eventually want them all because I have no self-control. And that's, yeah, I've... I've got most of them. There's a few that I just know I will never use. Um, and so I uh, I haven't gotten those. But everything I think I'll use, I've gotten or needed in a project. And Crystal says, that's how they get you 400 at a time. Um, they regularly go, I, I guess I shouldn't say regularly, but they do go on sale for buy one, get one free every now and again. And that's when I picked them up is when they went buy one, get one free. Matt, I think you'll have to do this repair again when you get your new soldering iron. Yeah. Now it's just not lining up properly. The last thing I soldered was the Pi Zero stem kits onto a couple of Raspberry Pis. Ah, so there's a bit of solder in this guy. And Crystal says, oh, that's nice. Seems they do decent deals fairly often. They do. Um, I've seen them come more frequently, but um, they did virtual trade shows earlier, if I remember right. And a lot of them went on sale for that. And then I don't know if they still do, but at the time I bought a bunch of my elements, they did financing. So most of my elements are financed. And that ding sound is my sublimation printer saying, change my cartridge. I have the cartridges, I just haven't changed them yet. Uh, I'm kind of glad I didn't buy a sublimation printer now. This is actually the first time I've been in my office this weekend. So Suzanne asked, what sublimation printer do I have? I have a Sawgrass 500. So it's not a super wide printer, but um, I got it because I was initially going to sublimate uh, fabric for patches. And yeah, I don't do that very much. Um, I need to get a new heat press. Uh, my heat press doesn't heat evenly. And that's pretty much where I've stopped. So um I guess it's time just to invest, bite the bullet and buy a Geo Knight, but I don't really want to pay for a lot of equipment right now. Maybe when we get a little further in the year and I can forecast my profit and loss a little better. Yeah, 
I know doing it this way is very dangerous, is then I can pop the pads off, but I'm not really pushing on it. I'm just trying to use the weight of the board to get it to go down. It's only got a little bit more to go. And Suzanne says she has the 400. I like it. I do a lot of mugs. Yeah, I need to do mugs or something um, just so that I can get it going. I know right before I bought it, uh, somebody sent me a um, – and she actually used to live in, in my town, and then she moved to Texas. But um, she sent me a Christmas ornament that was cut on wood, and it had a white side to it, and the white side was sublimatable, and she sent me a transfer. And so I was able to sublimate that. That was kind of that was kind of cool. So I might see if I can find some sublimation board and cut it on my laser into shapes, and then sublimate it into Christmas ornaments next year. We'll see. Sublimate everything. <laughs> I mean, you've got to use the ink. If you don't use it, it's just going to clean it. Run it through cleaning cycles till it's gone. And sublimation ink is fairly expensive. As I learned when I bought sublimation ink. <laughs> yeah, it was a... Uh, so I ditched... Um ink printers for a couple of years ago already and I got lasers um, but the one I had currently was or the one I had before that one was a duplex color it was like an office grade one that was really nice but it stopped doing a duplex every time you do duplex it would jam so I sold that for like 50 bucks and uh, someone didn't need the duplexing feature I told them about it I'm not a jerk like Mr. Monitor Seller. Um, and then I bought just a black and white one. But then I missed not being able, or being able to color print things. So wife and I just picked up a Lexmark one. Um, I looked at the price of ink or the toner and it's like the price of a new printer. But yep. 15,000 prints out of it, but Still, it seems pretty high. I really like those eco tanks. I've been debating because um, my laser printer is on its last leg. It doesn't print color anymore, and if you do try to print color, it just prints a really nice pink strip. But black and white, it's still okay. Um, Suzanne, I took some wood circles from Arteza, and I used lamination sheet and subbed on that for ornaments. Uh, I got some aftermarket sub ink that is compatible to Sawgrass. So I just picked up all of the colors from uh, Condi Systems. Um, it was the first time I had to buy. Initially, I had the uh, the sampler, what comes with the printer. Oh, uh, we're to the dangerous part now. Yeah. Now, here's the question. Are you going to put it all back together um, before you plug it in and test it? Or are you going to plug it in and test it before you put it all back together? We're going to test it before I put it back together because this thing is a pain in the ass. It took me probably about 30 hours to split the bezel on it. So Crystal says, just set up a design to sublimate on a patch. Excited to print it tomorrow and see how it comes out. If the result isn't too embarrassing, I'll post it. Yeah, I sublimated. I think I sublimated Gnome Twilly twice, maybe three times. I did it once for Matt. Um, I've also gotten some uh, 1000D polyester fabric that I've sublimated to and then some Twill. But my heat press kind of melts one side and doesn't heat the other side up enough. And so I just needed a new heat press. <laughs> And Suzanne, the aftermarket is half the cost. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. Um, okay, so now this is bottom. Oh, shoot, I forgot this cute. Dang it. <laughs> uh, 
So Crystal says, I'm trying on twill and thread. It should be okay if you're using 100% um, polyester thread. I've seen some really cool patches that have been sublimated. Um, just none that I have made. <laughs> have you tried Gunold's uh, Canvey stuff? No, I've only used their Twilly, and it's got that um, cotton, cotton content in it. And I think that might be part of my problem. But my other problem, I think, is I... I uh, heat it too long. I changed out my big plate into the little, it's like a five inch, six inch circle. Um, and that's helped. I'm kind of curious what the, the canvas would be like. Well, yeah, but then I have to buy a yard of canvas. Yeah. And I'm not quite up on twill yet. I think I get five or six yards at a time. You can do a lot of patches. Yeah. The only problem is the cost per when you're doing large sash frames worth. Yeah, there is that. And I have to actually physically sew the uh, two yards together, or at least that's just how I've been doing it. So, Suzanne, I have the heat press nation mug press because they have one with multiple tumbler and mug sizes. I think I got nine, but my regular heat press is a Geo Knight. I've heard really, really good things about Geo Knights and Stahl's Hotronics. Those are the two that I hear the best um, about. So, and Crystal, I know nothing about sublimation, just winging it. I learned best by trial and error. Yeah, I was winging it too. Um, there's. I want to say if you go to Condi Systems website and you look at some of their fabrics, they actually have the time and temp uh, to get you kind of in a ballpark. And that's where I started when I was looking at um, sublimating twill. Is I, I went to their website and looked at what they were doing on shirts. And then I did, I printed out a whole bunch of little black circles. And I would heat press little black circles on the fabric. And that's kind of how I dialed in my settings. Yeah, I just sent an email to Jeff saying, hey, can you print this for me? And then <laughs> it comes in the mail a few days later. Heat pressed on fabric and everything. Yep, those very turnkey operations there over at Jiffy and Jiffy and Customs. Oh, so Suzanne says Geo Night Factory is about 35 minutes from me. That's, I don't think there's anything that's close to me except maybe Matt, and he's like two and a half hours away. Yeah, well, we'll all be down in, uh, <laughs> what's it? down in uh fort worth yeah i almost said dax but wrong thing yeah see i i Mero is 20 minutes from suzanne suzanne so i think that suzanne picked an ideal location to be a garment decorator <laughs> not all of us are aware of that smart uh, I just realized turning this on is not going to be easy if I don't have the power button. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, plug power in. And Crystal says, I need a heat press that requires less power. I live off grid and that's a big power hog. Or maybe someday I'll just have normal power again. I think it's cool you live off grid. Um, we've looked at solar panels and my city actually did a, uh, they're putting in a solar farm and we could buy shares in it and we did not, but, um, we have our garage roof. It's a three car garage and it faces the South and there's nothing really blocking it. So it would be perfect for solar panels. Matt, your monitor tells you to check the cables. I don't know how much power my heat press pulls. I guess that's something I don't monitor because I live on the grid. Mine, I think, is like 1,500. 
1500 watts or something. That seems like a lot, but yeah, maybe it's ballpark. I don't know. The Geo Knights, you need a dedicated 20 amp circuit for them. Oh, so they take, they draw a lot of power. Yeah. And of course, there's no. Uh, don't have. No HDMI. <laughs> Dang it. Come on, Matt. Would you look at that? Disorganization means I know where things are. <laughs> At least that's what we tell ourselves. And it's not going to work because I never plugged it in. Wow, look at that stream. Suzanne says, I have solar panels, but I sell it back to the power company and get a check every month and a big credit on my electric bill. That's really cool. I've heard in some areas they do that, and in some areas they do not. And I'm not quite sure what my city does. It seems like something that they would do, though, because they like to be goal zero. They have all of the garbage cans in my town, um, the city ones. They're all solar paneled. And they're the little trash compactors. So you throw your garbage away and it packs the trash and it's all on solar. Hmm. <laughs> Matt, you need more ports. I do. <laughs> well, this is a short cable because it's meant for my programmer for my truck. So it's not very long. Well, at least you brought your programmer for your truck with it so that you don't lose it. It beeped, so I think it's doing something. And Suzanne, you can get a Tesla battery for backup power. That's really cool. I didn't know that. We just ended up putting a roof on our house and siding and windows. It was kind of a brutal year. We only planned on the siding. <laughs> no, we only planned on the windows. The siding and the roof was a surprise. So Chris will have a 400 watt solar system. My heat press is 1500 watts, which I run on an 1800 watt generator. Off-grid life is cool most of the time, especially nice during storms when we don't lose power. Yeah, and roof over your head is nice. Um, we've only lost power two times since we've lived in Ames. It's been really bad. Um, Derocho was one, and then I can't remember what caused the other one, but they were both massive citywide power outages for a few days. And Crystal, I live in a yurt glorified tent. I know what a yurt is. Uh, one of the few things that I know what it is. <laughs> and it's mainly because I saw it on a cartoon. We're not going to lie. Uh-oh, you need the driver? It's not plug and play? I guess. Well, I hope. <laughs> Maybe you bake the, the board too much. Uh, let's see if I didn't download it with a nice virus. Yeah, well, you know. Uh, I'm pretty sure we clicked that. And Crystal, most people have no idea what it is. Yeah, um, I didn't until it was actually on Bob's Burgers. And then I knew. Matt, you should use the touch screen. Yeah, I'll work on that. <laughs> You're only an hour and 17 minutes into this swap. 
Yeah, well, the nice thing about uh, how we operate is we don't uh, get rid of things that don't go our way. <laughs> you know, it would technically be a hid, I would think. It's not a mouse. I don't know what it would be showing up under. Touchscreen? Maybe? That would be logical. Well, let's see if it disappears if I unplug it. Touchpad, touchscreen. It did disappear. Must be under touchscreen then. Or maybe it just does work and... There is a stylus for it, apparently. But that oh, I wonder if it's a stylus only. Nope. Oh. Hmm. Drivers, uh, well, <laughs> it looks like we might not be in luck. Oh, so close. Well, I guess that is going to be it then. Because <laughs> it should have shown up under here as a... Touchscreen capable display. Yeah. It wouldn't be under here. Um, yeah, it's a little weird. Well, I guess I'll do some Googling, but uh, I guess that's pretty much going to be it then. Will comes mad at me because I don't have my dongle plugged in, but oh well. Oh, frumpy vase. Yep. So I guess uh, if you're watching, surprise you're still watching. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> yep, things don't always go our way. So it probably could have been that I fried the board now because the soldering iron got too hot, or not hot enough, but yeah, the board got too hot. There we go. Um, so. I'm going to blame it on that. It just never worked in the beginning. So there is that. I mean, it couldn't work without that Jack. Yeah. And that, why it was completely gone. I don't know. Um, Cause one would think if it broke, it would have fell inside the case and would have been in there. So maybe someone else already tried repairing it. I don't know. Cause there was, it wasn't inside the metal shroud. So oh, that's a weird, but um, it, it came was, off with the cable. <laughs> Yeah, but that means that they pulled it through very precisely, which mm. I, I don't know. It it seems more believable that I don't know. But that that it just didn't work. Yeah, I also never worked on a touchscreen monitor, so um, actually, I guess I could probably make sure I have everything plugged in. Um, yeah, that could be it too. I know that there are. There's not that. That little blue thing sticking up on the bottom isn't a ribbon cable, is it? The little blue thing? Well, it's blue on my screen. I don't know. Um, I don't know which one you're talking about. There's a little ribbon cable here, but that goes to the front panel connectors, which, I mean, if they're required, I don't know. But That would be the one I was asking about. Um, and 
that one is plugged in. Sort of probing around, seeing if I got even power going to the touchscreen uh, sensors. I don't actually know exactly how this one works anyways, so that could be another thing. <laughs> uh, making sure that I actually plug them in on the board. I highly, highly doubt that this would be the cause. I would laugh if it was, but I don't think it is either. Could it be turned off in the menu? I looked through it earlier and I did not see any settings. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Oh, dang it. Menu. Okay. Power saver, mode display, monitor status. Yeah, we don't care about that. <laughs> Not that. Yeah. I don't see anything. Oh, it looks like we're canned. Uh, it might just be some drivers or something. Um, I got other computers I can try it on, see what happens to. But yeah, I think I'm going to call it there. I've gone an hour over what this really should have been. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to get a new soldering iron because of it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I guess thanks for watching. Uh, stick around on The Embroidery Nerd if you haven't subscribed to your YouTube channel and join the Facebook group. And, yeah. All the social media handles. Yep. So I'm going to head out. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, sorry for watching. <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a great night.